welcome friends today we will discuss the bony orbit the orbits are situated one on each side of the root of the nose each orbit resembles a four sided pyramid it has an apex which is situated at the posterior end of the orbit at the medial end of the superior orbital fissure a base which is represented by the orbital opening on the face four walls the roof floor lateral and the medial walls the long axis of the orbit passes backwards and medially the medial walls of the two orbit are parallel and the lateral walls are set at right angle to each other each orbital opening or the base of the orbital cavity is quadrangular in shape and presents four margin the supraorbital margin is formed by the frontal bone This border presents a supraorbital notch or foramen at the junction of the medial one third with lateral two third. The supraorbital nerves and vessels passes to the forehead through the supraorbital notch or foramen. The supratrochlear vessels and nerve pass medial to the supraorbital notch. The infraorbital margin is formed by the maxilla bone medially and the zygomatic bone laterally. The infraorbital foramen is present just below this margin which transmit the infraorbital nerves and vessels the lateral margin of the orbit is formed by the zygomatic and the frontal bone the medial margin is formed by the frontal bone and the frontal process of the maxilla the medial wall of the orbit is very thin and is formed from anterior to posterior by the frontal process of the maxilla the lacrimal bone the orbital plate of the ethmoid and the body of the sphenoid most anteriorly the medial wall shows a deep groove called as the lacrimal groove this groove lodges the lacrimal sac it is bounded anteriorly by the anterior lacrimal crest which is a part of the frontal process of the maxilla and posteriorly by the posterior lacrimal crest which is a part of the lacrimal bone this groove leads in fairly through the nasolacrimal canal to the inferior meatus of the nose the medial wall is formed mostly by the orbital plate of the ethmoid which separates the orbit from the ethmoidal and the sphenoidal air sinuses the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal foramina are present at the superior border of this bone or the fronto ethmoidal suture at the junction of the roof with the medial wall through this foramina anterior and posterior ethmoidal nerves and vessels passes respectively the superior wall or the roof the superior wall is formed mainly by the orbital plate of the frontal bone most posteriorly a small part of the roof is formed by the lesser wing of the sphenoid anteromedially there is a presence of a small depression called as the trochlear fossa which gives attachment to the pulley for the superior oblique muscle anterolaterally there is a deep fossa called as the lacrimal fossa for the lacrimal gland the roof separates the orbit from the anterior cranial fossa the lateral wall the lateral wall is formed anteriorly by the zygomatic bone and posteriorly by the greater wing of the sphenoid the greater wing of the sphenoid separates the orbit from the medial cranial fossa the zygomatic bone separates it from the temporal fossa the vitreous or the zygomatic tubercle is a palpable elevation on the zygomatic bone just within the orbital margin it provides attachment to four structures lateral palpable ligament check ligament of lateral rectus muscle suspensive ligament of the eyeball and levator palpable superioris muscle the foramen for the zygomatic nerve is seen in the zygomatic bone the inferior wall or the floor it is formed mainly by the maxilla 
a small n to little part of the floor is also formed by the zygomatic bore. Most posteriorly, the floor is formed by the orbital process of the palatine bone. The floor separates the orbit from the maxillary sinus. Now the fissures, canal and the foramina of the orbital cavity. First the superior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure is present posteriorly between the roof and the later wall of the orbital cavity. It is bounded above by the lesser wing of the sphenoid, medially by the body of the sphenoid and below and laterally by the greater wing of the sphenoid. The superior orbital fissure communicates with the middle cranial fossa. Close to the medial end, the lower border of the fissure is marked by a tubercle which gives attachment to the lateral part of the common tendinous ring and extends across the fissure to gain attachment to the under surface of the lesser wing around the upper and the medial margins of the optic foramen. Through this common tendinous ring, the superior orbital fissure has been divided into three compartments, a lateral compartment, intermediate compartment and a medial compartment. Through the lateral compartment, lacrimal nerve, frontal nerve, trochlear nerve, superophthalmic vein and recurrent meningeal branch of lacrimal artery passes to the intermediate compartment that is which lies within the ring transmits the upper and lower divisions of oculomotor nerve, nasocerebral nerve between them and the abducens nerve below and later to the lower division of the oculomotor nerve. To the intromedial compartment passes the inferior ophthalmic vein. The inferior orbital fissure is present posteriorly between the lateral wall and the floor of the orbit. It is bounded above and laterally by the greater wing of the sphenoid and below and medially by the maxilla. It communicates posteriorly with the pterygopalatine fossa and laterally with the infratemporal fossa. The inferior orbital fissure gives passage to intraorbital vessels and nerve, zygomatic nerve, orbital branch of pterygopalatine ganglia, communication between the inferior ophthalmic veins and the pterygoid venous plexus. The optic canal. The optic canal is present at the apex of the orbital cavity at the junction of the roof and the medial wall. It is bounded medially by the body of the sphenoid and laterally by the lesser wing. It communicates with the middle canal fossa and transmits the optic nerve along with its meningeal coverings and ophthalmic artery. The infraorbital canal. The infraorbital canal is present in the bony substance of the maxilla. The canal is continuous posteriorly on the floor of the orbit as an infraorbital groove and opens entirely at the infraorbital foramen. It gives passage to the intraorbital nerves and vessels. The intraorbital nerve is a continuation of the maxillary nerve. The anterior and the posterior adminal foramina, these are two small foramina present at the upper border of the orbital plate of ethmoid, that is at the junction of the roof and the middle wall. These foramina transmit the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal nerves and vessels to the anterior canal fossa. The zygomatic foramen transmits the zygomatic nerve which divides into zygomaticotemporal branch and a zygomaticofacial branch. The zygomaticotemporal branch comes out from the zygomaticotemporal foramen and the zygomaticofacial nerve comes out from the zygomaticofacial foramen. 